Okay, I have the um, the meter hooked up to the power supply. It tells us to hook up to J um, tells us to hook up to J look at this my computer is not even online I get little warnings J802 J803 and we're looking for 35 volts and we would adjust volts DC and we'll adjust uh, R809 so coming back here and looking you can see R809 down there. There's a little trim pot. It has the white, like the uh, Loctite. Um, so you can tell it's never been adjusted. So what all do you guys think this thing we're going to come out at? Do um, you think it'll be about 35 volts? Let's... Um, volts, DC. I have the um, Variac transformer set to uh, 115, so we're right in the middle. All right, let's uh, let's turn her on. Relay, and we're only getting 21 volts. Wow, that's awfully awfully low. Um, uh, we're getting some AC bleed through it all onto that, which would be some bad caps. This is bouncing around. Yeah, we might have a little, some bad caps on this guy. So, um, yeah, I can adjust it right now. Uh, and see, where's my plastic one at? I don't know where my plastic screwdriver's at, darn it. Um, all right, I'll use this one very carefully. You guys should really, you should all have a plastic. Wow, that stuff is really, really, uh, it's really painted on there. So as you can see, I could probably get it up to 35 volts, but I think I'm going to um, just go ahead and rebuild this power supply. I hate, I hate, it's so clean and so pretty. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I think I have all the caps in stock to to rebuild this one. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it back down to where it was at, about 21, and then, um, We'll do a comparison. We'll leave it right there. And uh, after I change out the caps, um, and then I can even go further if I have to. I don't think there's any problems with the relay. I showed you in another video where I take the relays off and uh, clean them gently with uh, contact cleaner and a piece of a business card. But let's uh, let me uh, let me do this relay or this power board. And uh, I'm not going to film it because you guys have seen me do those before. And uh, I'll be back. Hey, um, I still work on this power supply. So yeah, this is a, a good reason on why we uh, should always mark the capacitors on which way we are pulling them out. Um, like I said, I always put a little tick mark going towards the face plate. But you can see on this one, they do not have the positive signs. So... I uh, was not going to be able to tell you, you know, uh, my camera keeps turning on me all by myself. I don't know why I was doing that. Um, but yeah, it has, I see little negative signs on the circuit board, but I'm not sure if that's what it's supposed to be, but pretty weird. So, um, yeah, just another reminder, make sure you put those little tick marks, you know, exactly which way those things go back in in case they're not marked. See, that's got a little junk on this. I'm going to clean that board up really fast. Hey, back here on this power supply, I was just showing you the difference in the newer capacitors. I think every one of these is a higher voltage, the same microfarads. I know some people will bump them up um, a little bit, you know, because the room is there now that you can go a little bit bigger. You might get, 
a little more base response. I don't know the power supply, you know, can function better. I, I'd, I'd have to read some more on that. But uh, I was just going to show you really fast, you know, you can see I'm using the Nichicon um, low impedance, high reliability, 105 degree um, caps for the power supply just to uh, try to upgrade that way to make them last a little bit longer. All right, we're back. The power supply is rebuilt. If you can see that there. But um, I did a bonehead move earlier. I was hooked up to the wrong connectors. Um, I hooked up to 802 and 801. And I was supposed to be at 802, 803, which is over here. So, I'll bet you, I left, remember I left that uh, put little potentiometer at the same spot. I'll bet you it was good earlier. I'll bet you we'll we get a good reading now. So, let's, let's see. So, uh, we're looking for 35 volts DC uh, meters on. Um, boom. Relay. And look at that. So I, I the capacitors were were pretty bad though. So yeah, 35, 18. We're supposed to be at 35. Let's uh let's knock it down just a, a pinch here. Very very touchy. 3509. That's good. Let me shut this back off because I'm gonna throw this up top here. Um. <clears throat> Like I said, I did, um, I did measure them all out, and they were, you know, the 470 was coming at 543, the 330s, one was 408, 414, the 470 at 16 volts was 619, the 220 was high. Every one of them was, uh, was, was high, so um, did that affect it? I, I, it would be interesting to see what it would have been at. Uh, before I pulled those uh, with my bonehead hookup on 801 instead of 803. Just got to learn to read right. So, but um, yeah, so the power supply is done. And um, I'm going to check the uh, biasing and stuff in a little bit. Okay, we're going to adjust the idle current on this one. Or actually, let's go to the DC offset first. I'm sorry. Um, so we're going to connect the DC voltmeter that has a scale of 0.5 to 1 volt range because we're doing millivolts. Hook it straight up to the speaker terminals and we're going to adjust the trimming resistor R762 for a zero DC output on the meter. Uh, repeat the same for the other channel. During this alignment, no load should be connected to the speaker terminals. So, all right. So um, I had a gentleman write on one of the videos asking about using two meters. So I have this one hooked up and I've got the meter up there hooked up also. Um, we're going to go millivolts and uh, let's see what we get. Let me move my light out of the way so you can see that. I uh, just hooked it up to the back to the speaker terminals and let's power her on and click so these are really pretty that one's pretty close already 0 0.004 and this one up here is reading if you can see it i have it set on the 200 millivolt scale so it's only reading yeah same maybe one millivolt that's bouncing this, this so this is pretty pretty darn on there if you did have to adjust it um where resistor r760 is that if you look at the drawing right at the one potential above it is r762 and it's the same on the other one but it's on the other side um on this side here because the the boards are flip-flopped to be um where they're at so this one's actually sitting pretty good pretty good we'll move on all right, last one for the night. Um, our idle current adjustment. It says to go to J753 and 754 on amplifier, and then we're going to adjust R763. But I did that, and I got 37 volts instead of getting 5 millivolts. So I went to the drawing, 
and look at this here 753 and 754 you're gonna get 37 volts because that's the 37 okay now if we're gonna bias between these two we need to go between zero here which is 760 and 754 to, to do our biasing and just to be sure I went and looked up really quick on audio karma and yeah there's a actually a few people that have said that the uh, the manuals wrong they also um, suggested instead of doing the five millivolts go to the 10 millivolts so um, one connector is on this side and then you have to so you have to stand up to get this the other connectors on that side the 760 and then um, so yep yeah, let's uh, go to millivolts and let's turn her on and we're bouncing right around nine eight um so yeah i'm gonna leave that on for a bit everyone's seen this stuff before um make sure it doesn't drift after about 10 15 minutes um i'm probably gonna hook up another meter really quick on the other side and and see where it's at and adjust that also to about 10 so just because i've seen some people talk about that but yeah when i first hooked up i'm like man i got 35 point i was like 35.7 i'm like what the freak so yeah you go to the drawing and that's what you're gonna get you're gonna get the 35 volts let me get this light out of here it gets on that darn screen um because yeah <laughs> you're measuring uh right where your 37 volts is at so when you get weird measurements, do a little research. Uh, it'd be nice to add a bunch of service bulletins uh, that, you know, if there's a service bulletin manual that Morantz has or something, I'm sure they do. It talks about all their um, mistakes and things like that, but um, the uh, the internet will help you out. Lots of uh, knowledgeable people in there already doing their trials and tribulations, and um, I got it, I saw it, but I wanted to double check it and make sure I was there, so, all right. Uh, that's gonna be it for this guys for this video it's getting pretty long already so but uh yeah this uh so far this um this unit is looking really really sweet it's a uh, it's a clean 2245 all right thanks for uh sticking around with me have a good night guys girls people